So why after all that, if that's the case, why do ketones have such a bad name? Um, excellent question. And it probably stems from the fact that one of the first victories of what modern medicine, when physicians stopped being empiricist and started doing research, one of the first victories of modern medicine was you, discovering insulin and learning to treat the uh, childhood onset, what we used to call childhood onset or type 1 diabetes. That's a type of diabetes where the body doesn't make insulin. And if you don't give insulin, the person dies. And when you have a type 1 diabetic who hasn't gotten insulin for a couple of days, their body goes out of control. They make ketones way out of proportion to what the body can use. And they go into what's called ketoacidosis. And they develop very high levels of ketones in the blood. Whereas when you restrict carbohydrate intake, which keeps insulin low but not zero, those people develop what we call nutritional ketosis, which is only one-tenth as high as ketoacidosis. But doctors have learned, and in the textbooks, you learn about ketoacidosis. Very few medical textbooks discuss nutritional ketosis. So most doctors, dietitians, and nurses, when they hear the word ketone, they think disease, they think imbalanced metabolism, and that's why I think the bad name persists in the face of very sound evidence that nutritional ketosis is a controlled metabolic state with many beneficial effects. You know, a lot of what Steve has talked about in terms of the brain adapting to ketones, this is not theoretical. There are several very elegant studies that have studied this and, and shown that, you know, over half the brain's energy demands can be met by ketones. And I think the other exciting point to make is that there is a, a, a very broad interest now in use of ketogenic diets to treat neurological disorders and, and uh, this has been well very well studied in, in kids with intractable seizures to, to treat epilepsy and there's some very uh, good friends and colleagues of ours who are, who are sort of leading that charge now and and that's been around for quite a while it uh, was used less frequently with the uh, introduction of several drugs but uh, according to our our friend that uh, the ketogenic diet for treating seizures has really had a, seen a resurgence and it happens to be very effective especially in in kids who may be uh, uh, non-responsive to drugs but uh, it's also uh, expanding into other neurological diseases and so I think we'll see in the next five or ten years uh, quite a lot of research done on other diseases, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and other other types of neurological disorders. So there's something happening in the keto adapted state that changes the fuel, perhaps changes the uh, oxidative stress. The neuroendocrine uh, system is probably adapting in a way we don't really understand all the mechanisms, but it's responding in a positive way that uh, uh, is is feeling the brain better and 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 perhaps uh, having a you know beneficial effect on the pathophysiology of some of these diseases.